Hello everyone, it's Anita and in today's video I'm going to give you some tips on how to write your bachelor's thesis. You might call it the dissertation or a final year project or whatever. I'm sure you know what I mean. So I just finished my bachelor's degree in social sciences and I wrote my bachelor's thesis in the field of political science. I have um, my thesis right here. Yeah, I just covered uh, sensitive information. <laughs> but yeah, um, it was 10,000 words. Uh, I know some have to write more. The reason for that is that we also had to take a seminar and participate in that seminar. So that's why, why we didn't have to write that much. Uh, so that is roughly, I think, 25 pages, they say, without, uh, you know, graphs and stuff like that. I put the timestamps of the different tips uh, in the description box and you should also see the different chapters on the video. I will first just talk about um, general tips and in the end I will quickly talk about my thesis, what it was about, for those of you who are interested. If you have something to add, please write a comment in the comment section down below. I'm sure others will appreciate your input. And yeah, that's all for the intro. Let's get into the actual video. The first tip is, uh, or I guess step, is to find a relevant research question. So what you want to do is find a gap in the literature, in the research. The way you do that is you <laughs> well, find a topic that is kind of broad and interesting to you and you start reading about it and hopefully that will lead to a research question or something that interests you a bit more and then you can look it up and see what has been done so far. Hopefully you will find relevant question that way. Some people don't get to choose the research question and um, their faculty or institute gives them one which can also be a positive thing because that means that they will probably find enough information about it and their advisor probably knows more about this topic so that uh, can be as positive but if you get a chance to choose your own question choose something that you're actually interested in and see if it's relevant because sometimes there's a gap for a reason maybe it's just not possible to do research on it maybe it's just not that relevant maybe it's not helpful maybe no one's interested in that um hopefully that's not the case but you know what i mean just that's something you can uh, bring up with your advisor. So that brings me to my second tip. Meet up with your advisor as soon as possible. Perhaps you were given an advisor. Maybe you had to find an advisor yourself. For that, I would say to someone you already know, uh, like maybe you took a class with them or seminar or you've read some of their work. For me, it was that we had to choose a seminar and write a... Uh, bachelor's thesis that relates to the topic of the seminar and the lecture was then my advisor, you know what I mean? So that was kind of easy for me, but I know that other people have to find an advisor. So yeah, anyway, that's not really the point. The point is that once you know who your advisor is, set up a meeting and discuss your first ideas. You can also then ask questions, talk about the deadlines, stuff like that and maybe they want you to write an expose slash proposal uh, maybe they want you to hand in a first draft by a certain date so try to find it out as soon as possible talk to your advisor especially if you're not sure about your research question that makes sense and uh, if you really have an idea you can kind of talk about your plans and see what they think and yeah it's just really helpful to do that as soon as you can. Then the next step is to start your research early. Of course, when you're writing your thesis, you might have to stop and do more research because you found out that you actually don't know as much as you should. And you might have to go back to the research pro process. Of course, that can happen, but generally I would say before writing anything, you should really do your research first because what you don't want is to write I know half of your thesis and then find out that you missed an important point because you didn't read enough about the topic so yeah don't do that and the literature you should consider should be series so you know academic books journal articles uh, sometimes 
I guess it depends on what you're writing about. Maybe you, because for me, I also had to consider newspaper articles because I wanted to know what the situation was for the, you know, general public, where the sentiments were, like in politics and media, stuff like that. So uh, I found those were also helpful resources. But you know what I mean. Generally, you want to stay within the, the academic literature. I can show you my bibliography <laughs> and these are just uh, articles, books, etc. I ended up referencing so I read more than that or skimmed through more than that. That just shows you that yeah you will have to read a lot. I mean I guess it also depends on your subject. For example if you decide to conduct interviews do that as soon as you can if, if you're collecting data yourself if you're not uh, relying on ex existing data then you know obviously have to start that work early as well so just make sure um that you give yourself enough time then the fourth tip is to write an expose that is basically your plan so uh, what's a research question? Why did you choose that question? How are you going to approach this research question? Um, what do you hope to find? Stuff like that. Maybe you will also add your like, timeline when you will be doing, you know, what part of the work. Maybe your advisor wants you to write one, which would be helpful. If they're not offering it, ask them if they are willing to discuss this with you. Maybe. You know, it doesn't have to be as for, but just your general idea, because it's important to, that, um, to get feedback on that as well. Before you start your actual like writing process, you can find numerous templates of that as well on the internet or Google how to write an expose or something like that, and they will give you some ideas. And I think it's, it's a good step to think about those questions. The fifth tip is to choose a method you're comfortable with. So ideally, that would be something you already did during your degree. If you had, you know, statistics courses, this would, of course, um, not be something completely new to you. Even if you're not 100% comfortable with that, at least you have some knowledge of it. Uh, so do that. If you're more comfortable with uh, conducting interviews, uh, maybe try to find a research question that works with that method. For me, I did something new-ish, I guess, but um, with that, it's it's not, I wouldn't say don't do that, but you might have to put more work into it if you're new to this um, approach. Then, what section should you write first? So my personal advice is to write the literature review first, then the method section, the actual research, so the you know, results section, and the conclusion, the introduction, and then the abstract, uh, which I know might be a bit confusing. The introduction is one of the last things I would write because that's when you um, know the when you know the outcome of your thesis. So that just makes more sense to me. Of course, you can always start working on different sections, uh, even if you when you're not done with one. I will talk about it in a second, but yeah. And of course the abstract, the abstract is like a short summary of your work. So that's the last thing you want to write, but it's the first thing that the reader is going to see. So that might be a bit confusing. That's just the way that I did it. And I would also recommend doing it like that. The next tip is to divide your tasks in small chunks. So if you're writing a to-do list, that's what I did, I love to do this. Instead of writing finished methods section, divide it a bit, like um, describe the data, explain why you chose this method, stuff like that. So really divide it because that way you have a better overview of what you still have to do and you get to cross off more things off your to-do list, <laughs> technically. So the next thing I want to talk about is what to do when you have a writer's block or feel unmotivated. Well, the first thing you could do is if you don't think you can write something in one section to move to another one, but if you still think like there's nothing, you, you can form a proper sentence, then just write the keywords down. Uh, for example, mention study by blah blah blah. Find out how many people have the in, in 2019 or whatever. 
um, give a definition of this and this, you know, like you don't have to write it out but you just write down what you want to write in the future and that might uh, motivate you to uh, do that or yeah when you come back and feel motivated you, um, you're already prepared that's one thing you can do uh, you can also do little things like formatting for example uh, or you know like adding the page number, insert a list of tables, if you're listing some abbreviations, maybe do those, you know, little things you don't, that, that you don't have to think about that much. If nothing else works, then I guess just take a break. The next tip is reference as you go. Don't write your whole thesis and then remember to include the references because that no don't do that of course you can write a paragraph if you're in the zone to you know keep writing but then make sure to go back and uh, put the references in the next tip is to add attachments maybe it makes sense to do that because you are using a data set and you want to put a list of the variables in the attachments or maybe you wrote too many words so maybe you can put i don't know like a table or a notes or something in the attachment section because that won't count the word count if you use a statistics program then maybe you want to put the nice graphs in your actual work but then the coefficient table you put that in the attachments you know what i mean the next tip is to get inspired by other people's work um i did that i went to the library for political science they had other people's masters um thesis that's how you say the plural sorry um so they had that in the library and i just looked at them looked how they structured their uh, work and try to um copy that i mean not copy that not i didn't plagiarize anything i just tried to see what how they structured everything that was helpful don't delete anything make a separate document and put everything you delete in that document because maybe you will change your mind and you know then it's gone <laughs> so uh if you have that other document you can go back and you know copy those sentences back in next point i want to talk about is what to do when you get distracted so that happened to me pretty much at the end of the writing process that's uh when i used forest i think a lot of people know about forest it's an app where you can grow trees or other plants and during that time you set a timer for i don't know, like 30 minutes or however long you want I, know, I don't know what the maximum is and during that time you can't go on your phone if you do that the plant will die yeah i did that in september i'll just show you <laughs> what that looked like so i spent 61 hours and 20 minutes in September on my breakfast thesis but not saying that all of this time was productive yeah sometimes you you know you just set a timer it doesn't mean that you use the time effectively you know what I mean but for me I found that just setting a timer for let's just let's just say 30 minutes just helped me to focus when you tell yourself oh you know just do that for 30 minutes it's not that much just 30 minutes chances are once those 30 minutes are up you will start another session because then you're in the work zone you could also block certain sites on the internet shut your phone off or put your phone somewhere else stuff like that and uh, the next tip is to let other people proofread your thesis or just read your thesis uh, just to see if what you wrote made sense those people might spot some errors you just overlooked that's a bit of a mistake i made i didn't finish my thesis on time for people to read the whole thing two people read a big chunk of my thesis no one read everything um so that was a bit of a mistake on my part so make sure you finish your thesis early enough uh so that other people have the time to go through it, um, correct it, or, you know, suggest, make suggestions, make comments, 
um, then you can work with that feedback. And the last tip I want to give you is to take breaks. I went on a walk every day, pretty much every day. Just, you know, do something to clear your head. You don't need to spend the whole day writing. Make sure to do fun things as well. Otherwise, you will just be miserable and it won't help your work. All right, I hope uh, those tips were helpful. Now I'm just quickly going to talk about my thesis. If you couldn't tell, I'm a native German speaker. I'm from the German speaking part of Switzerland. So, so the camera stopped recording. <laughs> what I was about to say is that I wrote my this is in German. I'll try to explain to you what it was about, but I'm sorry if it doesn't make sense. So my research question translated into English is to what extent is there a tension between freedom and security in the fight against terrorism in a democratic constitutional state? And what I did is I looked at um, Switzerland specifically, so it was a one case study. I wanted to see how the laws changed since 9-11 because um, you know it's been 20 years and as we know 9-11 was a turning point in um, well anti-terrorism laws measures and so on so I was really interested to see on um, how fundamental rights are slash were restricted if those restrictions increased over time it's a philosophical question as well because you cannot exercise any rights if you're not safe you know so there needs to be some sort of security for you to even have the freedom you know what i mean so it's this tension is quite interesting in that aspect for um the german speakers out there will stop the uh, video to read my abstract like i said an abstract is just a quick summary so i hope you were able to read that it's not anything <laughs> special, it's just a quick summary of what I did, what I found. What I did was I used a data set to show the timeline from 1990 to 2016 because that was the data that was available and I tried to show how those rights changed. I mean the graph is a bit misleading, <laughs> I don't want to talk much about it, but yeah it's a bit misleading and that was just a quick part of my thesis. What I actually did was I looked at the different laws that came into effect in the last 20 years and analyzed them, used different criteria, different sources, legal sources to analyze what articles could potentially restrict certain fun fundamental rights, listed those, uh, to, um, just try to see if there was a general pattern and my conclusion is, I mean, it was kind of a subjective work. It would be more helpful to uh, hear different people, different legal experts, for example, to see what they think. Um, but in general, what we can see is that there are more and more preventive measures put in place. So before people commit a crime, before they start to even um, plan, and let's just say they they like certain things on social media. So that could make you suspicious of being a potential terrorist. That law I'm now talking about, we just voted on that in um, in the summer. So it's, sorry, I had to charge it quickly. And I was, this video is a bit of a mess. But yeah, what I wanted to say is, it was interesting for me to go through the different laws, to read about, like, it, in the beginning, obviously, people were <laughs> against the government having access to so much information. Uh, they were against preventative measures, but this sentiment kind of changed for a time. We will see what ef effect these, especially the most recent change of law, will have on fundamental rights here in Switzerland. And, you know, I think I learned a lot during this writing process. I think it's a topic that's worth discussing and I think I did find some interesting things and I'm happy about that. You know, there's only so much you can do, especially, you know, it's a bachelor's thesis for a master's thesis. I would do it differently. For this work, I relied on laws. I, I analyzed those like legal texts so yeah it's not really something I was familiar with and uh, 
Yeah, but it, it's an interesting process. But yeah, I think I talked way too much, so I will end the video here. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, it would really make my day if you did that. See you in my next video. Bye!